Hello everybody, we are in week 12, the last week of this particular course. So, in this week we shall discuss uh, memory. Uh, so, before uh, we begin with memory, uh, its different types, uh, how input output uh, is uh, arranged, the addressing uh, methods and some in discussion on memory read and write cy cycles, uh, we shall have a quick recap of what we discussed in week 11, that is last week. So, in the last week we discussed uh, analog uh, to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion. And we started with the digital to analog conversion and we found that binary ladder based uh, DAC is preferred over the other method which is uh, weighted register based DAC uh, for uh, the from the loading point of view, uh, the uh, output impedance point of view. So, there are certain advantages and this is uh, uh, you know more common. And we had seen that uh, other than these uh, uh, the weighting part that we get the, where the binary weights get mapped to the corresponding analog output. Uh, uh, so, there are other circuitry in the form of buffer amplifier, register, level amplifier, okay, all those things are required to make a DAC work. And then we move to ADC and we found that uh, flash ADC, uh, the simultaneous conversion method uh, that is very uh, uh, fast but the number of comparators required is very large. Okay. Uh, and uh, in the counter based method we found that the number of comparator reduces to 1, but the time taken to convert uh, uh, an analog signal to corresponding digital equivalent is uh, quite large. And to reduce the time we uh, discussed continuous tracking uh, uh, type of ADC we using both up counter and down counter. Then we moved on and we discussed successive approximation uh, type ADC which is very popular and uh, it has its uh, advantages uh, especially when multiple inputs are to be converted one after another. Uh, in the continuous uh, uh, tracking type the tracking uh, gets lost, the lock in get lots lost once you move from one pit input to another. We also discussed uh, dual trace ADC which uh, within it, it uses integrator uh, for which uh, we have an advantage of uh, that ADC providing better noise immunity. And further uh, we discussed delta sigma ADC which is good for, glow, uh, for slow changing signals and uh, it uses oversampling of the input and it can give very high uh, uh, resolution. I mean the number of uh, bits uh, that we can get uh, uh, in A to D conversion is quite large. And we also discussed some of the performance uh, metrics, accuracy, resolution and the errors involved both from digital type and analog type and uh, that is how we concluded uh, week 11. Okay. Moving on, uh, we begin with uh, the types of memory that uh, we encounter in digital electronics or digital circuits. And uh, here we are talking about uh, uh, some specially uh, designed data storage units uh, as memory. Okay. And uh, we have seen uh, flip flop uh, register, they are being used as memory. And in this particular uh, week, we shall look more into uh, semiconductor memory chips, specially designed uh, semiconductor memory chips. And uh, also there are memory. Uh, elements uh, which is coming in the form of you know magnetic uh, you know disc, okay, optical disc uh, that we have used, uh, we are using in computers, but that that is outside the purview of this particular discussion, and uh, we uh, make use of them in the uh, when we connect uh, them as a peripheral to a computing platform, okay. Uh, so in semiconductor memory chips, we ha have mainly two uh, kinds of uh, them. One is called RAM, uh, random access memory. Uh, this is uh, volatile means if power goes on then the value gets lost and it is easy to write and it is easy to read. So, multiple read and write operation is uh, possible and it that for which it is also called read write memory. Okay. Contrast to that we have got another type of memory called ROM, read only memory. Uh, which is non-volatile okay, 
and it is meant for multiple reading. Okay, so uh, that what does it mean? I mean, it has to be written once, okay, with some effort. So it requires some special effort, special mechanism, right? So from the user point of view, the final user, end user, will be able to read it many times, okay. But the developers, from developers' point of view, when uh, it is required, it will be able to. Uh, the developer will be able to write it uh, uh, by some special mechanism. Okay. And to be noted that uh, though it is called ROM, uh, it is also a random access memory by nature. Okay. Uh, so, random access means the, the access of the uh, information, uh, the storage stored uh, data, digital uh, information. Uh, it is uh, independent of physical position of the mem memory within the memory block. Okay, it does not really uh, matter where it is there, but if it is a sequential axis, then it has to move uh, you know sequentially from one place to another. So, that will take uh, if it is uh, further, uh, then it will take more time, like if it is in a tape. So, uh, the one which is closer, it will we can fetch it quick, quickly, the one that is further uh, from the head, uh, which is reading the tape, then it will take more time to reach that particular location. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, uh, within this RAM and ROM, there are further subdivisions like in RAM and that is called static RAM, uh, which does not require refreshing. Di there is dynamic RAM, which requires periodic refreshing. Each one has its you know strength and weaknesses. Similarly, in ROM, we have got uh, PROM, we have got EPROM, all those varieties we shall take up in subsequent classes. So, this, these are the two major variety. And uh, other than that, uh, uh, the memory, uh, of course, we understand that in a memory block, uh, there will be uh, an address lines. Okay? So, this what you see over here, this is a RAM, representative RAM block, so address lines. So, this indicates a location in the memory. Okay? So, if there, are, there is a 2 bit address line, say A0 and A1, then 2 to the power 2, 4 such places in the memory can be addressed right and in that you can write data right so if the data is uh, of uh, n bit it could be 1 bit data it could be 4 bit data it could be 8 bit data and all so this is the data in okay and this is the data out that is as i said uh, random access memory read write is uh, uh, possible at the user end okay and uh, then we have uh, the other uh, kind of you know control inputs in the form of uh, read write enable so sometimes these three or you know control inputs can be clubbed into two and all and uh, subsequent uh, output can be generated from those two inputs so those schemes we shall see little later so enable means this particular ram block is being accessed okay and for which this is the corresponding address what you see over here and then when you say read operation, so you are inhibiting write, so you are reading whatever is already stored. Okay? And when you are saying write, then you are overriding the current input, so you are writing a new information. Okay? So the old information is lost. Okay? So then you can again read by invoking read. So these are the standard uh, uh, you know, uh, read write and enable these control inputs that you will see. Right? And, uh, when you take it to ROM, so basically in this particular case, you will see that there is a enable, whenever it is enabled, so you know it is the reading operation only that you are doing and the from the developer side, something is has already been written into it, which we can read multiple times. And similarly, where from you are reading, that is defined by these address lines. Okay? And uh, memory can be, uh, another uh, subdivision could be there. Uh, bit organized or word, word organized. So, in a particular location, address location, if only one bit information is there, if that is the way memory is organized, then it is called bit organized. Okay? And in that location, number of bits are there. Okay? So, a group of bits are there, then it is called word organized. And it is the size of the word depending on which you will be having 4 bit, 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit or so on and so forth depending on your requirement. Is it clear? So, these are the way we uh, broadly define memory and then we shall see further subdivisions going forward. Okay. 
Now, uh, as I said, the uh, control mechanisms we shall see, right? So, here we see uh, a, a particular memory block, a very simple memory block, right? Uh, which is having a, a control, uh, you know, uh, input uh, CS and read stroke write. So, R for read and W for write, write is, uh, you know, complement. So, basically, if it is 1, then read operation will take place and if it is 0, then write operation will take place, ok. So, then 2 inputs is clubbed into 1 and CS means chip select, bar means if it is 0, this chip is selected and if it is 1, then this chip is not selected, is it clear? And uh, this is the memory unit and there are physical memory cells, more about that we shall study later, right. And that particular cell is addressed by some address bits for which certain address recorder is there, ok. So, this we shall take up later. So, once uh, this chip is selected and we know that the address lines are pointing to a particular location of the physical location of the memory, right, then two operations are possible, right. One is read operation, another is write operation. So, in this particular case what we are showing that for this memory block we have got separate input and I output. So, this I stands for input, ok. In brief we often say that it is I O, I means input and O means output, ok, right. So, uh, then this control logic is generating a write signal, right or a read signal. So, whenever it is, so this is a tri-stated buffer. So, if it is not invoked, so if it is 0, ok. So, then this output will be high impedance. So, basically this input is not going to the output. So, it does not get written, is it fine? And whenever it is 1, then this I naught goes to a specific its location, I 1 its uh, location, I 2 its location and I 3 corresponding location, is it fine? So, these are separate, these four, you know, input lines are there. And for our read operation, so at that time definitely write should not be there, then there will be you know mix up, right. So, at that time write will not be happening. So, whatever is already stored, the memory address is in uh, you know this uh, uh, invoked, the location is invoked, chip select is enabled, then whatever is there, so this will be 1 and then it will go to the output, otherwise it will be remaining tri-stated, ok, high impedance state. So, this is one a simple organization, right with separate input and output. And how you can uh, generate, uh, you know, this logic, this control logic, we can see that uh, what we are looking at. So, if C s is 0, ok, then if r is 0, ok, r is 0 means you are not doing the reading operation, you are doing the write operation. So, w r should be 1 and r d is equal to 0, right. And chip select, it is enabled 0, right. This r is 1 that means now you are doing the reading operation. So, W R should be 0 and R D should be 1, ok. And when chip select is 1, right. So, it is not selected, right. This memory chip, this block is not selected, then whether it is 0 or 1, read and write should be 0. Is it fine? So, if you then convert it to corresponding Boolean expression, so this is the expression you get, right. So, W and R bar is, you know, the same you know, the, so you can use one of them and then if you translate it to a corresponding uh, digital logic block, this is what you get, very simple. Is it fine? Ok. C s prime and this is going as uh, w, that is r bar, ok. And this is C s prime r, ok. Now, uh, we can see memory blocks, memory ICs uh, in which these input and output are not separate, it, they could be common also, ok. So, this comes from the fact that when you are doing a reading operation, you are not doing write operation and when you are writing, you are not doing the read operation, is not it? So, uh, that's, that gives us an opportunity to uh, have a common input and output line, ok. So, this is one such arrangement what you can see over here, 
right this is the com you know input output is common so you can see earlier in the previous arrangement this was going out and this is a separate output that was there right this is what we had seen now what we are doing since the when this is used so these input blocks are not used right so what we are doing over here we are just connecting it to the io line over here right and this control logic remains the same for which when you are doing the write operation this is zero so it is tri stated so this is very high impedance so it is not affecting uh, the input uh, data that is getting written in any way okay so this is what uh, we uh, can use in the common io uh, configuration is it fine right so uh, we have memory ics uh, so some examples i can show you uh, that 2114 2115 2147 these are all bjt based uh, memory ics right and uh, they have got this either common or separate this kind of arrangement d1 that we have just discussed okay and this organization 1k cross 4 what does it mean that 1000 such locations are there right physical locations are there and to invoke this 1000 location so 1001k we know in digital uh, logic or uh, digital discussion uh, binary arithmetic so 1k stands for 1024 so how many address bit will be required so log 1024 to the base of 2 so 10 address bits will be required so this particular ic will be having 10 uh, you know uh, address bit to point to a particular location of the memory and in that how many uh, in each location how many bits are stored so 4 bits are stored so it is word organized right and these are these uh, input and output this writing is this is common okay and all these are uh, using two control logic cs and r uh, read stroke uh, write bar the one that we had discussed just now right now what about this one 2115 this is bit organized again 1k but in each location you are having only one bit that is stored right and in this case you have got separate uh, you know input and output uh, you know uh, lines okay right and 6168 this is CMOS based uh, IC right uh, memory IC so we shall see both you know BJT based uh, you know memory cell and CMOS based memory cell little later I mean in subsequent classes right uh, so uh, so this is 4k cross 4 and it also has common and there are other uh, memory ics in which the control inputs as i was uh, discussing we have got instead of two three control inputs so chip select write enable for writing purpose output enable this is for reading purpose so this kind of three kind of you know control inputs are there so this is one such examples this is another example these are CMOS based IC and these are the corresponding uh, size of the memory right and the this is the way the logics are generated in those cases okay fine so we move on now this addressing memory so just now what we had uh, discussed if you try to visualize how it looks like so in a you know memory block so this is one such example so here this is the address decoder to which in this particular example four address uh, bits are coming and that is getting decoded so you have got 16 lines generated so these are 16 lines 1 2 to 16 so if you are looking at this memory block so this is the memory block right so these are 16 lines that are generated this is coming from the road decoder okay so there are 1 2 3 4 so these are the decoding decoded output and then this is the memory so 16 such lines to the memory okay after the decoder and from each location right each location you are having four such bits right so these are the four cells that you can see more about this we shall discuss in the next class how these cells are formed and all how they are you know so this is connected right so when you are addressing this one this particular line of course the others one ones are not addressed so whatever is information is there in this cell 
how why I mean this is one side this is another side both are coming over here. So, this organization we shall see little later and then we are reading it ok during the reading uh, when we are uh, uh, doing the read operation and when you are trying to write it. So, information will go from here to here and change the value of the cell and during the reading operation information will come from here to here if it is the first location and then other locations are tri stated. So, they are not contributing ok and similarly the next uh, location is addressed. So, this one so information will come from here for read operation and will go to it during write operation ok and otherwise uh, it will remain tri stated ok. So, this is for bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, bit 4. So, this is what uh, you know uh, organized right and this is the data uh, coming in and this is the data going out and we have uh, some uh, this particular thing a practical uh, IC, IC 489 ok if possible you can work uh, with it in the lab. So, this is a 16 cross 4. So, 16 such you see uh, locations and uh, 4 uh, means 4 bits in each location 64 bit RAM ok. And uh, so, this CE that you see over here chip enable or chip select uh, in uh, our earlier discussion. So, in the IC data CTP you see you can see that it is written as memory enable ok. So, write enable write enable it is there ok which is inverse of read ok that we have already seen. The other thing that you see the data in I 1, I 2, I 3, I 4 in this particular diagram the corresponding th three, uh, thing in the data sheet is D 1, D 2, D 3, D 4 and this is the corresponding output final output in this diagram D 1 bar, D 2 bar etcetera, etcetera which corresponds to Q 1 bar, Q 2 bar and then you can do this mapping fine. And this kind of addressing where the address bits are coming and one after another this row uh, decoding uh, uh, I mean through a row decoder locations are being uh, accessed. So, this is also known as linear addressing ok. And in contrast to that we shall see another kind of addressing which is called matrix addressing ok. So, uh, what we do there? So, in this a particular location is accessed particular location is accessed through a row de uh, decoder and a column decoder ok. So, uh, how does it really work? So, let us look at one example first and then we shall go come to this particular block. So, this is 16 lines we have already seen right uh, see that uh, 7489 example the previous uh, in the previous slide. So, these are the 16 lines that are uh, going to the memory after the row decoder. So, this is the memory uh, say block. So, say this is a 16 cross 1 it could be 16 cross 4 also ok. So, this is there whereas, in this case what you see if you are having in each location say one such thing one such bit you are trying to ad address. So, you can have 4 rows here and 4 rows there and at the cross point at the cross point over here you can store 1 bit right. So, it is a 2 dimensional plane now and if you want to store 4 bit. So, then it will be coming in the z direction if this is x and this is y then it is in the z direction. So, 4 such cells will be placed is it clear or if it is just 1 uh, bit then it is over here. So, how many such uh, things will be required? So, this is 4 line and this is 4 line. So, 8 lines to the memory instead of 16 lines going to the memory ok. So, this is the usefulness of matrix based addressing and most of the you know uh, advanced memory chips uh, you know you will see that it is uh, using uh, matrix based addressing ok. So, uh, general to if you want to generalize it. So, this is what I was uh, talking about this you know uh, cross point will be having the memory cell. To generalized uh, we, we see if it is a square arrangement I mean if you equally divide then the number of rows will be the number of uh, lines going to the memory will be the list ok. So, uh, if we have uh, you know this uh, 2 to the power b lines in total. So, half will be here half will be there ok. But note that note that the number of uh, this uh, address will always be uh, the going to the chip will, will be of course, 
this uh, you know b by 2 here and b by 2 here total b that is what will be required that we cannot avoid of course. Okay. But the way it is going to the uh, memory uh, physical block we can uh, um, you know make uh, you know different kind of arrangements over there. Okay. Now, uh, we would look at uh, okay, we have seen certain control inputs, we have uh, understood that there is a memory cell in which it is getting uh, uh, something data is getting written or we are uh, trying to read from it. So, how one memory read cycle will look like. Okay. So, uh, if you talk about uh, this uh, timing diagram based uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, understanding. Uh, then we look at uh, one such uh, cycle over here. So, here this is high means we are trying to, so this is low, this is high. So, this is we are to trying to do a read operation. Okay? And then we are floating the uh, uh, a memory address, a valid address, the physical location from which it has to be uh, you know read. Right? And then chip is, chip select is enabled. Okay? Chip select high means it is uh, disabled. So, it is going low means it is enabled. Okay? And then you see the valid data that you are reading, it is coming after some point of time. Okay? So, these are certain delays associated with uh, you know uh, this memory read operation. Okay? So, from address uh, line being made valid to a valid data comes, okay, the time need to be provided. So, that is known as uh, access time, it is a very important parameter of an you know uh, into you know data sheet and other things you will be able to see that some such uh, you know uh, value is provided. And this uh, some chip select to valid data, so this is called chip select uh, access. Okay? And uh, the other important parameter is this hold time, right? so that is the when the valid address has been removed right and but output remains valid so even after the address is changed so this so this is the time that you see this is the hold time okay and in comparison uh, if it is done with respect to chip select then it is called chip select hold, hold time and this is one uh, memory read cycle after that another address can be floated and the minimum time that is required that defines the speed of how uh, this memory read operation. Okay? And typically it is of the order of 100 nanoseconds. So, each of these parameters if you look at the data set will be around say 30 nanoseconds or you know different values for different uh, such things. Okay? But all together if you just look at it then it comes uh, around uh, that 100 nanoseconds and you know faster memory means uh, smaller this value, slower means memory means larger, uh, this value is larger. Okay? So, if that is a memory read cycle, we will be having a corresponding memory write cycle. Okay? So, how memory write cycle, you know, the, what are the sequence of events uh, taking place? So, what you see that uh, first address is made, uh, you know, a valid address is put on which uh, uh, where the uh, writing is to be done. Okay? Then that particular chip is selected because that address could be can belong to some other you know chip also okay so whether it is meant for that specific uh, chip or not and then the uh, write operation so this particular uh, control input goes low that means it is uh, write is to be done writing is to be done and after some time a valid data becomes available okay and then uh, this uh, write is disabled okay then uh, this chip select is disabled and valid data becomes unavailable after some time. So, this is the valid data where this actually you are reading uh, the information okay, from the memory location. Right? Similar to read cycle, we have some of these important parameters. Right? So, the whole of it from one address to next valid address that is the write cycle time, the minimum time that is required. Again, it is of the order of uh, that 100 nanosecond okay, uh, uh, typically. And the setup time is minimum time between placement of this valid address okay, and uh, the uh, write enable. So, this is your setup time. right? So, 
these are uh, some other important parameters. So, th this is the time in which uh, write table need to remain valid okay? and data write time overlap. So, this is the uh, minimum time input to remain stable before write disables. Okay? So, this, this is the minimum time required for this uh, after uh, this valid data is available it is need to be remain stable. So, this, uh, this write enable need to remain stable okay? and then uh, comes data hold time. So, data hold time is the minimum time data to remain valid after write disables okay? and similarly this address hold time uh, this write disables, but after this much of time the uh, this uh, address should remain valid. Okay? So, these are some important timing uh, parameters in association with memory read and write operation. Okay. So, with this we conclude the introduction to memory and what we have seen very briefly that uh, semiconductor memory chips are primarily of two types RAM and ROM. Both are actually random access okay, uh, where the access time is independent of physical location of the memory cells and input output data lines to memory can be separate or common. Okay. Uh, and uh, memory addressing uh, can be linear or matrix based and of course, for uh, matrix based the number of lines input lines to locate a cell is minimum uh, uh, can be minimum and it is minimum for square matrix. Okay? And uh, in memory read and write cycle the sequence of appearance, appearance of control inputs address and data are important and there are minimum allowable times for various segments and as a whole that gives us an uh, estimate of uh, how quickly we can read or write uh, into memory. Okay? Thank you.